It's a brutally humid day here in Sydney, Australia. But despite that, I'm gonna show you my method for sowing winter growing succulents, cordiciforms, and geophytic species, typically from the Western Cape region of South Africa. All the plants that you can see around me have primarily been grown from seed with only a few exceptions. And I can show you some examples of plants that I've grown using the method that I'm going to be showing you today. A Pachypodium namaquanum, this Athona, and Pelagonium species. Those last two are year old seedlings. Pachypodium is more like four or five years old. Now, it's worth remembering the processes that work for me here in Sydney may not necessarily work in every climate. So you may need to make some adjustments according to your location and how the temperature varies in your part of the world. This is also a jack of all trades approach. It works well for most species and there are some exceptions that I'll talk about later on in the video, but overall it does pretty well by most plants. Speaking of species, the different types of plants that I will be sowing today include Athonas, Pelagoniums, Sarcocolans, Dioscoria, as well as bulbous plants such as Morea, Bulbine, uh, Tracheandra, Albuca, and Drimia. Hopefully, you're going to have a bit of success with all those different types of plants. Now the first thing everyone wants to know about is soil. And you can see here, my typical soil mix that I use with seedlings. The most important thing is that it needs to be gritty. All right. And you can see, pretty high mineral component in this. This is a mixture, I'd say about 70% minerals, grit of different types. There's some pumice, there's some granite, there's a bit of Akadama and zeolite in there. It doesn't need to be this complex. I just like how it looks. And then the other 30% is an organic store-bought bagged uh, seedling soil. Now, had some questions about how I treat the soil prior to sowing. Don't do anything to it. It doesn't really need it. Um, there may be some uh, fungal activity in here but realistically I've never had an issue so I try to avoid microwaving I try to avoid uh, using any sort of disinfectant process uh, because there is another step that I'll take that will actually generally protect seedlings as they grow and I'll show you that next what I find is the most important way to protect young seedlings is to provide them with a really airy top dressing. Now, this is my fan stone, which not available in all areas. Uh, certainly not a necessity to use. You could use vermiculite or even pumice as a top dressing. Um, but what I'll be doing today is after I sow the seeds, I'll apply a layer of this top dressing. Now, I've sifted it and washed out any real fine particles. We don't want it to cake and solidify as a surface kind of crust on what we're doing. The purpose of this top dressing is to, first of all, create something of a barrier between the seedling itself and any pathogens in the soil. Realistically, I don't expect there'll be much to worry about anyway. Also provides a little bit of support to young seedlings. And the third thing it does is it retains moisture. It actually creates the humid environment that we're going to want to support seed germination. So really valuable thing to include when you are mixing up any sort of soil mix, make sure you have a good gritty mineral top dressing that you can apply to the surface. Now, I'm gonna use this combined with my soil mix. You can see I've pre-potted a whole collection of soil mixes to do some sowing right now. I'm going to show you my process, starting off with a packet of Athona clavifolia seeds. Typically I find it's easiest just to pour the seeds out onto 
little folded piece of paper mm. enables you to distribute them relatively easily you can see the seeds in there and then give it a little tap and sprinkle them on the surface of the soil now the size of the seeds will determine the depth that they need to be sown smaller seeds like these ones i will just surface sow and then cover with my topsoil the really small seeds such as a crassula seed probably wouldn't even cover with any sort of grit and i'll speak about that a little bit later on whereas larger seeds you can bury to a depth of about the seed size not hugely important but different seeds will have different requirements now They've been surface sown, so I'm gonna get some of my top dressing and apply that now. Just a thin layer of grit, just to retain that moisture and create a little bit of a barrier. And that's it. Now all we need to do, label the pot, set it aside. I'll talk a little bit more about sunlight, air, humidity in the next section. So you've sown your seeds, ready to go, what next? How do we get them to germinate? There are three things that we need to give consideration to. Those being temperature, light and moisture. Winter growing plants, unsurprisingly, are gonna need cooler temperatures. Some of them, you could germinate probably any time of the year. They'll come up and they'll grow according to the temperatures around them. Others are going to sit there dormant until particularly overnight temperatures start to cool down, reach an optimal range for their, their growth, and then they'll germinate. So it can be a waiting game at this time of year. When it comes to moisture, don't need to worry too much with that top dressing it will retain a lot of moisture so giving them a bit of a bottom water plenty uh, putting the pots in a tray full of water and letting them soak up and sit there probably only need to do that twice a week to maintain that moisture level that humidity around the seeds that will help them to germinate and then lastly in terms of sunlight generally these species don't require light to, uh, to germinate it's more in the aftercare when they do germinate you don't want them sitting in the blasting sun a lot of these plants will enjoy a lot of sunlight when they reach maturity but when they start off you'll want to keep them in a relatively shaded spot out of that direct blasting especially afternoon light to help them to grow and build a bit of strength uh, and then sometimes it can be the second year or the third year that they can really take a lot of that sunlight, particularly in the, uh, the bulbous species. A lot of them really like a lot of sun to help get some of their unique forms. Of course, there's always the question of why didn't it germinate? There's probably three main reasons. The first one, non-viable seeds. If you're sowing old seed, uh, it's unlikely to germinate. Different species and genera have different lifespans. A lot of the uh, Isoaceae family have got very long viability of seed. Whereas things like an Albuca or uh, Aerospermum, if you're not sowing them in the year that they were, uh, that they, they flowered, realistically, you might have trouble. I am planning on sowing some year old Aerospermum seeds this year. I don't have high hopes but I'll be very interested to see what happens. So first reason, non-viable seed. Second reason, some of these seeds actually come with germination inhibitors. So that's kind of a chemical protection outside the seed that will prevent it from germinating straight away. Whole different variety of environmental reasons behind this, but especially in some of the species like the uh, bulbines, the tracheandra, you can find you sow the seeds, they don't come up this year. If you put the pots out again next autumn, they'll come up without any trouble whatsoever. Spring up like grass because that germination inhibitor has, uh, has gone away. And of course, if you get your cultural practices wrong, 
if the nights aren't cool enough, if you're not providing enough moisture, that can also be a problem as well. So three main reasons why your seeds may not germinate. Well worth keeping an eye on them. And as you'll see in my next section about recording, can give you a real good indicator about where you may have gone wrong and where you can improve. Now, from my perspective, one of the most important aspects of this is that process of experimentation and continual learning. How do you end up growing nice plants? Plants that look like this after a few years, through practice and through trying different methods, learning, and of course, recording what you do. I'll be writing down quite detailed notes about how many seeds I sow, the uh, conditions that they were sown in, the soil mix that I've used, experimenting with different things. There are some things that I'll be trying for the first time today. Other things that I know are a tried and true method. But I'll write it all down so I can see what works, what doesn't work, and I can refer back to my notes next year when I'm undoubtedly going to be doing this all over again. So try to keep a record, whether that be on paper, whether that be in a Google Doc, whatever works for you. But it's a really important part of this process in terms of improvement and learning from your mistakes because you will make mistakes I'm gonna make mistakes today I have no doubt about it part of the process and the joy of sowing seeds so some species and genera specific advice first of all let's talk about pelagoniums and sarcocolon from the geraniaceae family. You can see here I've got two pots. One is short and squat, and the other one is about twice as tall. These tall pots are for my pelagoniums and my sarcocolon. They have quite deep and extensive root systems, and if you don't enable them to grow into a deeper space, you'll stunt their growth. In addition to that, with sarcocolon, you can see I've got quite a few pre-prepared tall pots. With sarcocolon, I prefer to sow one seed per pot. They don't transfer well. Uh, you can prick out little pelagonium seedlings without too much trouble. But sarcocolons get really sensitive. Their roots are very delicate and very fine. And so when you take them out of their soil, they generally uh, respond quite poorly. And so... For me, anyway, I like to sow them into a pot that they can stay in for many, many years. Next on the list, a couple of plants that defy those temperature rules. I'm talking about Pachypodium namaquanum and Aloe palanzii. Now, these are plants that, although they are winter growing, their habits can be a little bit temperamental. They don't mind growing in summer at times. And I actually find sowing their seeds at the height of summer can be beneficial. I wouldn't wait until autumn. You can give them enough time to put on quite a bit of size before they go into their first uh, summer dormancy. This, for example, is a Pachypodium namaquanum that was sown earlier this summer. You can see it's already reaching a reasonable size and that I have no doubts will be fine in the six or seven months when it starts to go dormant. Meanwhile, this is an Aloe palanzii, which is about one year old. I sowed it last summer. Uh, it's just endured its first summer dormancy. Not a problem at all, as you can see. Quite a decent size without any trouble uh, arriving out into our autumn at all. Um, so both of these species I'd be sowing in summertime and not worrying too much about autumn temperatures. They germinate fine in, uh, in high heat anyway. I actually use a heat map to get the pachypodiums started. So something well worth knowing. Now, if you're sowing plants in the Izoaceae family, such as these Conophytum obcadellum or Gibeums, uh, I've got some Skeletiums that I'm going to be sowing today, or even uh, your Muria, etc., etc. These are plants their seeds are like dust, but you don't want to surface so, like I said earlier. You can actually cover them with a very fine layer of grit or sand, 
provides a bit of structure for the little seedlings coming through um, and uh, and enables them to to grow relatively well so as Aishi, I wouldn't worry too much about surface sowing not too deep you don't want to bury the seeds completely uh, a bit of air movement around them is fine I'd be using uh, just a very thin layer of my uh, topsoil that I showed you earlier and the last species that I'm going to speak to specifically now is Crassula umbella. I haven't sown a lot of different Crassula seeds, but I have sown Crassula umbella. I don't have an example to show you because they haven't emerged from their summer dormancy just yet. Had mixed success, to be honest, sowing these seeds. So this year I'm going to be trying something new. Um, in the past, I've sown them with success using a layer of top dressing. This year I'm going to be surface sowing them and putting them in a little plastic baggie. Maintain that high humidity. You'll definitely want to keep these ones in the shade in, in their natural environment. They do grow in kind of shaded crevices so they won't like any direct sun whatsoever. Um, but maintaining a high humidity, the seeds are incredibly fine, just like dust. Almost impossible to see to the naked eye. Um, so I'll be following through and hoping that a new method, like I say, experimentation is the key. Uh, a new method bears more consistent results than those that I've had in the past. We'll see how we go. So that's my process. Hopefully it made sense. Hopefully it works out for you. If you've got any questions, shoot me a message in the comments here or on Instagram at buyu.bros. Um, you know, I don't care if you subscribe or not. I don't understand YouTube, so do your best. And, uh, you know, have a pretty good one, hey? I'll be back to show you some germination results. Hopefully, something actually germinates, right? This is a little postscript now, showing the effectiveness of the method that I've used. It's been about two weeks since I sowed those seeds and it's been unseasonably warm in Sydney which has probably slowed germination down a little bit. Some of the species that I sowed prefer cooler temperatures particularly overnight. However, there has been some germination that's taken place. About four days after I sowed those seeds the first seedlings started to come up. The first one that I noticed was Sarcocolon multifidum. And you can see, here's one example of a little, little seedling. Uh, at sitting at about 75% germination overall in terms of sowing this one. Also, very quick to come up, another Sarcocolon species, and this was Sarcocolon patisonii. Uh, not as high a rate of germination, but still uh, seedlings coming up even now. Staying within the Geraniaceae family, we've got some Pelagonium seedlings, you can see here, uh, Pelagonium crassicol, uh, which have successfully germinated. And then moving well outside of that, we've got a range of other things. There is, and it might be hard to see because it's quite small, but that's an example of Crassothona sparsiflora, which is a species that I know nothing about, as well as a few other little curiosities. I've got some albucas in here that are coming up, little grass-like things. Uh, I've had Drimia species also germinate, as well as uh, an Aeriospermum, which I don't think I mentioned at the start of the video, uh, because in sowing those seeds, they were over a year old and uh, didn't think I was gonna have any luck with them, but one of those has germinated as well. There are several genera that have not yet germinated. Bulbines, uh, probably key amongst them. That's because they need cooler temperatures. So I'm gonna follow through later on. Uh, probably in two or three months, I'll come back with another video just showing the overall impact of, of this method. But this is just a very early taste test of the efficacy of uh, my seed sowing method. So do what you will with it. Um, Good luck, happy sowing, and, uh, and have a good one.